Hi everyone, it's Sean here from TurboSource, and I will be walking you through the installation of your Turblone 347 stainless steel cast EWG manifold turbo kit. This will be a step-by-step -step video of the installation of the turbo kit that can be done by any enthusiast with a basic tool set. The tools that are needed for this installation are the following. A long or short 8mm socket with quarter inch drive and or a flathead screwdriver a long 10 millimeter socket, a short 15 millimeter socket, a socket swivel, multiple lengths of socket extensions, a 10 millimeter ratchet wrench, a 13 millimeter open-ended wrench, a 15 millimeter open-ended wrench, 11 16 open-ended wrench, a 6 millimeter Allen head wrench, a 3 16 Allen head wrench, anti-seize, it can be copper or silver. To start off, you are going to want to loosen the compressor housing in order to orientate it for your intercooler piping. Use the 10 millimeter ratchet wrench or long 10 millimeter socket. Once the clamp is able to be moved easily, you will want to secure the turbine housing with one hand and use the other to loosen the compressor housing. Next, the turbine housing bolts will need to be loosened up. Use a 13 millimeter open-ended wrench to loosen the five turbine housing bolts just enough so that the turbine housing can be moved freely. If you position the turbo as if it was sitting in your engine bay, compressor wheel facing towards the front of the car, and you are the engine, the coolant port plug furthest from you needs to be on the top of the two coolant ports. The coolant port plug on the side that is closest to you needs to be on the bottom of the two coolant ports. Note, if the coolant port plugs are oriented differently than I just explained, you'll use a 6mm Allen head socket to move them into their correct position. For this video, we had the engine studs removed from this mock-up engine. The studs used in this video are Inconel stud kits we sell, which fit rather perfectly without the locking washer. Note, removing the studs allows the end user to assemble the turbo onto the manifold on a bench versus in the engine bay, which is far easier than securing the turbo to the manifold in the engine bay. We chose to show the difficult way. Note, in order to remove your factory studs, you'll want to put two nuts on the stud and tighten the two nuts onto each other. Then you will be able to turn the nut that's closest to the engine counterclockwise to remove the stud from the engine. Note, if you damage the rotor housing stud holes, which can happen, you can helicoil the rotor housings to fix the hole. We recommend the 90 to 95 Cosmo exhaust manifold gaskets from Atkins Rotary for $50 each. Install the Turblown EWG cast manifold and make sure to add anti-seize to each of the nuts. The factory recommendation for torque spec is 48 foot-pounds. If you are not using EGTs or logging back pressure, you will want to install all four 1 8 MPT port plugs into the cast manifold with anti-seize. Use the 3 16 Allen head wrench to tighten these port plugs until they are snug. Install the Inconel studs into the Turblown EWG cast manifold. Make sure to add anti-seize to each stud and the studs can just be hand tightened into the manifold. Install the TurboSource Inconel T4 divided gasket onto the Turblone EWG cast manifold. Install the EFR turbocharger onto the cast manifold. This is only a temporary install to get the initial clocking done on the CHRA and the compressor housing. Start off with installing the Inconel nuts to secure the turbine housing to the cast manifold. You will want to start with the nut closest to the engine and closest to the downpipe due to the way the turbine housing is casted. Then start the nut closest to the passenger wheel well and closest to the downpipe. 
Once those nuts are hand tightened down, you can fully tighten down the nut closest to the passenger wheel well and the compressor housing. Use the 15 millimeter socket and the 15 millimeter open-ended wrench to tighten these nuts. You will want to clock the CHRA so that the oil feed is pointing directly up to the sky. Tighten down one of the turbine housing bolts with a 13 millimeter open-ended wrench. Secondly, you will clock the compressor housing to fit your intercooler piping configuration and tighten down the compressor cover clamp with a 10 millimeter ratchet wrench or a long 10 millimeter socket. Note, after the turbo is fully installed later in the video, you may need to slightly adjust the compressor cover depending on the CHRI tweaks that are explained later in the video. Once the turbine housing single bolt has been tightened and the compressor cover clamp has been tightened, please remove the turbo from the cast manifold for further adjustments. Next, take the TurboSmart Gen 5 wastegate clamp and loosen or tighten the nut on the clamp so that it is only on by two threads. This allows the clamp to still be placed on the Turblown EWG cast manifold and it allows any TurboSmart 40mm wastegate to be installed onto the manifold. Prior to installing the wastegate, make sure to install the valve seat or the wastegate will not function at all, creating a large exhaust leak. Note, these Gen 5 clamps are significantly different than the previous versions, making the installation of the wastegate extremely easy. The clamp is designed to push the valve seat down as you tighten the clamp with a long 10 millimeter socket versus the old clamps that you had to push on top of the wastegate in order to get the clamp to even close. The orientation of each wastegate does need to be in a rough location. The wastegate closest to the front of the car needs the outlet to point towards the bottom of the car in the gap in the subframe. The rear wastegate has a rough location pointing towards the firewall. Do not fully tighten down the clamps such you can still move them once you have the dump tubes installed. Install each of the dump tubes with their associated TurboSmart Gen 5 clamp, but do not fully tighten down the clamps. You should now be able to move each of the wastegates and their associated dump tubes into position. Note, you will want to make sure the rear wastegate assembly is as low as possible but not touching the transmission or the subframe. The front wastegate assembly makes sure the dump tube is not touching the subframe either. Please refer to the TurboSmart directions that are available on their website for routing the vacuum lines and or the water lines if you are interested in installing those on the Gen 5 wastegates. Next, you will want to tighten down all five turbine housing bolts, but prior to doing so, you will want to mock up the Turblown EFR oil drain fitting to make sure that the tip of the drain is roughly 5 16th of an inch away from the T4 flange on the turbine housing. This gap is required so that the oil drain will fit correctly and not touch any of the hot parts. Once this is done, you can tighten all five turbine housing bolts. Next, the oil drain will be installed onto the turbo. You will first install the Turblown oil drain fitting using the provided hardware and a 6mm Allen head wrench. Next, you will want to prep the oil drain line. Due to how close the rubber line is to the turbo kit hot parts, we provide a titanium sleeve. This sleeve is kind of like a Chinese finger trap. You will want to stick your finger in each end and push them together to widen the hole of the sleeve. Then you will slide the rubber hose in the titanium sleeve with the stitching end closest to the turbo. And then add one of the larger clamps provided with the turbo kit. After that is done, you will be able to push this assembly onto the turbolone oil drain flange that has been previously secured onto the turbo. You only need to push the oil drain line roughly a half an inch onto the oil drain flange. You will want to make sure that the hose clamp is on the inside edge 
of the beaded end of the oil drain flange. Tighten the clamp with an 8 millimeter socket and or a flat head screwdriver. Next we are going to add the Dash 6AN coolant fittings onto the turbo. Reminder, to make sure that the coolant port plug closest to the engine needs to be on the bottom port and the coolant port plug closest to the passenger wheel well needs to be on the top port. Use the 11 16 open-ended wrench to install both of the Dash 6 AN coolant fittings into the turbo with the crush washer that is provided in the turbo kit. Next install the turbo into the engine bay. We advise using anti-seize on each of the 15 millimeter nuts that are provided with the Inconel stud kit to secure the turbo to the manifold. Same as before, you will want to start off with the back nut closest to the engine due to the turbine housing castings. Then work your way counterclockwise around the turbo. Note, depending on the variation of the castings, you may not be able to install the lock washer on every stud, but if you can, it's worth having them. Installing the turbo onto the manifold in the engine bay is significantly more difficult than on the bench to get the nuts tightened to 48 foot-pounds, but this does require you to pull your engine studs prior to the install of the manifold, so keep that in mind. You can use a 15 millimeter open-ended wrench and a 15 millimeter socket on two of the four nuts, but the other two require a crow's foot attachment and a sh shallow swivel socket to really get the appropriate tightening on the nuts. Next, the coolant lines will need to be installed onto the turbocharger. Take the Dash 6AN 90 degree elbow and attach the shorter Turblown stainless steel bent coolant line. Then push on the longer of the two 3 8 rubber lines onto the shorter Turblown stainless steel bent coolant line. Note the rubber line only needs to go on the tubing around half an inch while making sure the clamp that is provided is behind the bead to ensure the line does not come off. Tighten the clamp over the rubber hose using an 8 millimeter socket or a flat screwdriver. This assembly is now ready to be installed onto the turbocharger. Hand tighten the short stainless steel line assembly to the 6AN coolant port closest to the engine. Then add a second clamp onto the rubber hose and attach the rubber hose to the coolant nipple on the top of your water pump housing. Note, if you have removed this nipple, you can reposition the coolant line or purchase a longer rubber line to utilize other nipples on the water pump housing. Before you tighten down the coolant line, you will need to adjust the line to make sure it is not in the way of any of the engine components like fuel rails, injectors, and sensors. Use the 11 16 open-ended wrench to tighten the small coolant line assembly. You will use a similar strategy on the longer Turblown stainless steel coolant line. Note, the rubber hose will be going to the lower coolant nipple on the water pump housing, just above the heater core nipple. Next, the Turblown Engineering Stainless Steel Heater Core Line Install. This comes with four larger clamps, the same that are used on the oil drain assembly. Two clamps per end. Attach the smaller of the two heater core line rubber hoses onto the stainless steel heater core line that is closest to the firewall. Note, you can use silicone spray to make it easier to get the rubber line on. Use an 8mm socket and or a flathead screwdriver to secure all four clamps. Next, the oil return line will need to be connected to the 13B REW front cover. Make sure the twin turbo flange has been removed. Take the Turblown oil drain flange and install it onto the front cover with a 
long 10 millimeter socket. Note, the turbo and flanges have an O-ring seal, so a gasket is not required. Once the flange is tightened, you will install the rubber line with the provided clamp that you had previously temporarily installed onto the oil drain line. Note, make sure that the rubber line is pushed on so that the clamp is past the bead at the end of the flange. Tighten this clamp with an 8mm socket or a flathead screwdriver. Next, the oil feed line will need to be installed. Take the dash 4AN fitting that is provided and install it with its associated crush washer onto the front iron. Use the 11 16th open-ended wrench to tighten this fitting. Then you will install the oil feed line. Use the 11 16th open-ended wrench to tighten each of the ends of this line. Lastly, the turbulent engineering downpipe will be installed. Take the V-band clamp that is provided and put the nut on the clamp at the end of the threads for the clamp. This will allow you to push the clamp over the V-band on the back of the turbocharger. Next, you will loosely install the downpipe to the midpipe with the new hardware provided. Note, if you are using the OEM catalytic converter, you will need to remove the studs since they are much thicker hardware. Now you can mate the downpipe to the turbo and secure the V-band clamp using a long 10 millimeter socket. Once the V-band clamp is tightened, you can go back and tighten the midpipe to downpipe hardware using a 14 millimeter open-ended wrench and a 14 millimeter socket. That wraps up the install of the Turblown Engineering EWG CAS Manifold Turbo Kit. If there are further questions, you are always welcome to call us at 763-753-9939.